Hi guys, it's me Chazra HD and we are today bringing you me and Nib a special video where we are going to be looking at the updates from Hockenheim from teams such as Mercedes, Racing Point and of course Williams and a couple other teams as well. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today and Nib is again like he was yesterday on the podcast with us again and he's going to take us through the updates and how the teams are looking to improve aerodynamically in 2019 at the moment and Nib, I'm just going to let you take us away uh, thank you very much i'm looking forward to doing this and of course this you know we've done a couple of these or well, we've done one of these throughout the season but we just i just thought it was a bit too hard to go through looking back all the way throughout the season um and getting them getting like the best of the upgrades through this so what we're going to do from now on if there are subst substantial upgrades from teams at every race we're going to cover them after the race weekend has finished in the break, uh, in like the couple of days up leading towards the next Grand Prix. So you guys are updated with the updates that the F1 teams are bringing to their cars. But first of, first of all, we'll start off with a brand new front, front wing that Mercedes brought to Hockenheim. Just a little um, little update there on the, end, on the end plate, just to create some more vortices um, on the outside edge of the front wing, of course, to head down towards the barge boards, and then we'll next we'll move on to the little uh little wing that they've got behind the suspension arm, just to try and condition the airflow as it comes bouncing off that suspension arm. Uh, nice little piece of aero there brought by Mercedes. But then next we will move on to um, the side facing shot of their barge board areas. They've gone for a little bit of a different um, philosophy here with their with their barge boards um, on on the outer part of the of the floor. Very interesting to see they've gone for almost a Haas style um, barge board approach there in that area. Haas run a very similar st type of barge board. Not entirely sure why they've gone for that philosophy. Obviously, they've seen numbers in their CFD which they have liked, and they decided to go with that. So that is. Those are the new barge boards on the um, Mercedes. But now on the front looking shot, once again, of the side pods, um, that little part where the red arrow, red arrow is sticking towards, that is brand new. They've re um, resurfaced that. I, c I don't have a corresponding photo to see how that's changed. But now because this is going to be a, a weekly thing, uh, what we're going to be able to do in the upcoming weeks and races when there are more updates from teams is we're going to go look back and do a comparison to see how it's changed from one place to another. So I think in a couple of weeks' time, we'll be able to see ex quite exactly how those things have changed. And now moving on to the rear wing of the Mercedes, they brought some a new rear wing as well. So quite a substantial upgrade for Mercedes. Um, they just added some more little... Um, I don't know exactly what what to call these, but some new little um, pieces of of um, bodywork to the outside of the rear wing end plate. There, just those little streaks through where Epson and the CrowdStrike um, logos are. They just brought some new little pieces there, but they did also bring an upgrade to their side pods. But it almost wasn't an upgrade to their side pods. It was more of a hot weather package to their sideboards. Because we've seen in quad in our free practice three that they actually took those off once the temperatures have cooled down from Friday to put on these smaller side pods, which brought more performance. Because of course, the tighter the car is, the more performance that it, there is going to be produced from the car. And ultimately, that was very successful in getting Lewis Hamilton to take pole position. But now moving on to Haas, who actually brought some upgrades. Of course, this. Um, this past weekend, um, which, of course, Kevin Magnussen only ran on the car. Don't believe Roman Grosjean ran them on the car. But just, first of all, moving on to their barge board area, they brought a little upgrade to their barge board area. Um, I believe they brought that a little bit of an upgrade to a boomerang, a little bit of a boomerang wing, a little bit of a more backwards boomerang wing um, than what you'd rather see and what we'll see on the Williams very shortly. Um, but a little upgrade there for Haas and... First upgrade Haas have brought in quite some time, and Haas did also bring a new wing. I don't have a fantastic picture of that, but we've just got a picture of Haas's rear wing there for you guys. But now moving on 
to on to Toro Rosso, I believe it is next up. Toro Rosso brought some new barge boards to this race. They they did add a T wing, as you can see there, and it's connected to to those parts that are connected to um, where Kivia and the PTT lubricants um, sponsorship is right there. So that nice little upgrade for Toro Rosso, and that certainly did help them. And also, you can see just how complex um, those little elements on the side of the floor are and trying to get vortices. Very, very brilliant there. And speaking of floors, Toro Rosso did indeed bring a new floor to the, to the German Grand Prix. And you can see some little winglets there on the on the street cuts uh, just in front of the rear tyre. And that is just to direct um, the airflow out of the way of the rear tyre to make sure that the rear tyre just stays a little bit cooler so it doesn't get all that dirty air um, blowing into it. So quite a little important um, thing there. That's why those cuts and slots are there in front of the front of the rear tire to try and get the air away from that rear tire to protect it, down to get it down towards the diffuser. But it looks like they've decided that maybe they need a little bit more of an upgrade there and that they need to get it around the outside of the rear tire. But now moving on to Racing Point, who brought one half of their B-spec car that they're going to be bringing um, in in Budapest. So a big upgrade here for Racing Point. First of all, moving on to the side-facing shot of their new front wing, where, the, of course, they've got the BWT logo. They've just changed um, the outer end plate here. Um, there is another shot here, but I didn't I've quite save. I can't remember exactly where it's gone. Um, so they've just cut out that little part there where it's now curved up. That just used to be one continuous streak, and it didn't have this little up-facing cut-out part. So that is just, once again, to create that airflow to help it go over and around the front tire, whereas before when it was more flat, it was going probably more just straight into the tire, which is not what you want. You want to get that dirty air out and away from the front tire. Now moving on to their mirrors, they've debuted a new mirror, that open-faced mirror, which a lot of teams have been running so far this year. Um, so nice little upgrade there. Just that all, all that just adds a little bit more performance and any little part of performance, an extra performance that you can find from something as simple as something like this. F1 teams will take it and use it and run away with it. And that's exactly what Racing Point have brought to the German Grand Prix. And now moving on to the next area of the car, they brought um, some new side pods and also a new floor. So um, at the start of the season, Racing Point, because they're running mostly their 28 car, 2018 car, um, certainly during pre-season testing, they left the bodywork very open. So uh, um, the side pods were very large and there wasn't much room um, for the floor to do its work. Um, it was very, very fat. It was a very fat-looking um, car um, compared to the other teams. Certainly, I don't don't think you could say that any actual um, F1 car in terms of the side pod area is a fat car anymore. Certainly used to be, but that is not the case now. So Racing Point have gone for a very Red Bull-style um, side pod here. It's very just slimmed down, and it's very nice Nice to see that other teams are able to do that and work around with the cooling. Of course, if you have the same engine, it's a bit easier to do that, to copy that. But of course, very well done to Racing Point there to make that work. And they've also brought a new floor and you can see all the amount of cuts and slots that they've got in front of the rear tire just to produce more downforce to curl it underneath the car towards the rear diffuser. And of course, as I mentioned, to make sure that they get any sort of dirty air away from the rear tyre. But that is it for the racing point. And of course, as they bring more upgrades to um, the Hungara ring, we will cover them after that race weekend. But now moving on to Williams. Yes, that's right. Williams brought some upgrades to this race. Williams brought a, a boomerang wing. They brought some upgrades to the barge boards. So very nice to see. It's certainly looking a little bit more complex than what it um, was early in this season because compared to um, certainly what you've seen from Mercedes, you can see why Williams are three seconds a lap off Mercedes. There's just absolutely a lack of complexity in their barge board area. So it's good to see that Williams are starting to bring a couple of extra things 
um, to the race weekend here. And they also did bring a new floor because they, their floor previously uh, was just really not good whatsoever. They, they didn't have any longer streaks. It was just lots of little um, semicircle cuts in front of the rear tie, which just really doesn't do the job. It doesn't produce the downforce that these long streaks cut in the floor do. So that is what they debuted at, at um, Hockenheim. They brought those cuts and slots in the floor, and also they kept a little bit of those little cuts just in front of the rear tire to, of course, as I've mentioned, just try and get as much airflow around the rear tire as possible. But that concludes all of the upgrades that are being brought by the teams um, for the German Grand Prix week. And I'm sure that there were some little other upgrades on teams, but these are certainly the main upgrades that were featured during Thursday and Friday. So coming coming to um, the last race before the, the summer break in Budapest, I expect a couple of upgrades from the team. I know that Ferrari are bringing some upgrades to course racing points, so we will have another video covering the upgrades that are going to come from Budapest in the next week or so. So I'll be certainly looking forward to having a look at those upgrades. And thank you to Chazza for allowing me to do this little technical analysis and just tech update video. I do enjoy doing these. It's nice to just talk about this. And it's something that I have always um, been very interested in ever since I um, fell in love with Formula One at a young age. So thanks to Chaz for giving me this opportunity, as always, to do this. And it's been a pleasure as ever. So until next time that you hear my voice, which will be on the Sunday race watch along for the Hungarian Grand Prix. I will see you guys later. Absolutely, and thank you, Nib, for coming on to this video and analyzing these new aerodynamic upgrades. And as Nib said, we're going to do more regular uh, tech analysis videos because, as um, I think Nib said, it's harder to you know go back through races from two months ago and see what a team like Ferrari or Red Bull brought two months ago when it's a lot easier to look at what is currently going on. So there'll be a lot more, hopefully, tech analysis videos looking at the current updates on the grid. But guys, thank you for coming along to this video and also, uh, you know, looking at the video and checking out the current updates on the Formula One grid. Make sure to subscribe for more content like this as we're going to do plenty more tech videos on the channel. Bottom right of the screen, you can do it right there or click on my channel name, go to the homepage and subscribe and hit the notifications bell and smash the like button if you want to see this content continue. Comment down below what you thought of this video and also comment down below what do you think about the current updates on the Formula 1 grid for 2019 going into the final race before the summer break as well. As usual, don't forget to join the Discord. Best place for notifications of my videos and streams. Link below in the description. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Chaz6110. And check out my website, chazrhd.com, for more content like this. But guys, until my stream tomorrow at 1.30pm UK time for the Hungarian Grand Prix practice to watch along. It has been me, Chaz HD. Goodbye.